Hello Gators, good evening. Mr. Pruitt here from fifth grade, uh, wishing you um, a lovely evening. I hope that you are well and able to stay warm on this early winter's night. I have a story I would like to read to you today called Agatha's Featherbed. Not just another wild goose story. I hope you enjoy. Agatha's Featherbed, not just another wild goose story. Story by Carmen Agrediti. Pictures by Laura L. Seeley. Do you see that little shop sandwiched between two skyscrapers? The shop belongs to my friend, Agatha. She spins yarn and weaves cloth, which she sells. The patterns she weaves are so amazing and the colors so beautiful that people come from all over Manhattan to buy her wares. Agatha loves to talk, and she tells wonderful stories. In fact, you could say that Agatha can spin a yarn better than anyone I know. Here's one she told me the other day, and I know it must be true because even Agatha couldn't have made this one up. One afternoon, a little boy was shopping with his mother in Agatha's fabric shop. He was very bored and began playing with a shiny scrap of red cloth. Agatha leaned down and said to him, that's silk. Do you know where it comes from? He shook his head. It comes from worms, said Agatha. Worms, he exclaimed. Why, yes, silkworms, said Agatha. Wow, what kind of worm does this come from? He asked, holding up a ball of purple cotton yarn. That's a very good question, Agatha replied. That's cotton, and it doesn't come from a worm at all. It comes from a cotton ball that grows right out of the ground. What about the rest of this stuff? asked the boy. Does it come from neat places too? Oh yes, this is wool and it comes from sheep. That's easy. You're right, she said. Now, this cloth is linen. Feel how stiff it is. I bet you can't guess where it comes from. The boy thought and thought. Finally, he asked, well, where does it come from? A plant called flax, answered Agatha. Let me tell you something I tell all my customers, especially children. Everything comes from something. Nothing comes from nothing. Just like paper comes from trees, and glass comes from sand, an answer comes from a question all you have to do is ask. It made the little boy smile. That evening, after everyone had got home, Agatha went upstairs to her apartment. Several months earlier, she had ordered a new feather bed from her favorite catalog, LL uh, BB Lean. It had just arrived that very day. Her old mattress was so lumpy and bumpy, it was like sleeping on, all, on coal, coal lumps and cherry pits. Quickly, she changed into her nightgown and brushed and flossed her teeth. 
She took the, out the tortoise shell pins, and her long white hair fell and fell and fell until it lay in swirls around her feet. Then she brushed it with her boar bristle brush. Agatha never even finished her 100 strokes. She was eager to try out her new mattress. She settled into bed, and in minutes, she was asleep. Agatha dreamed that her room was filled with strange sounds, hushed whispers, and the pitter-patter of little feet. Suddenly, she awoke with a start as she heard her window close with a thud. She turned slowly in bed and saw that standing across her window sill were... six naked geese. They were shivering in the cold and covered with goosebumps. She caught them just as they had ducked out. Agatha star stared and stared. You could have knocked her over with a feather. At last, she opened the window and asked, May I help you? The smallest goose, Sydney, stepped into the room. He pointed his pink little wing at Agatha's bed and said, We want our feathers back. What? asked Agatha. Feathers, Agatha, feathers. You know, we've been listening. Everything comes from something. Nothing comes from nothing. Just like paper comes from trees and glass comes from sand. The feathers in a feather bed don't grow on trees, my dear, said the little goose. Where did you think the feathers in your feather bed came from? Agatha looked at the bed and she looked at the geese and she looked at the bed and she looked at the geese. Something in, something in her sensed that her goose was cooked. I have to tell you, we mean business, Agatha said Sydney. I wouldn't miss with a gaggle of angry naked geese. We're not just a bunch of quacks. This could get ugly. But Agatha had already made up her mind. She had worked hard to earn the money to buy that feather bed. And yet she thought, what about those poor plucky little guys out there in the cold? I'll tell you what, said Agatha, a little down in the mouth. Get back to me in three days, and trust me. And she gave them her credit card so they could book, book up at the downtown motel. Taking this as a sign of goodwill, they left quietly. They hoped she wasn't sending them on a wild goose chase. Agatha didn't waste a minute. She went downstairs to her sewing room, snatched her scissors, and got to work. For three days, she didn't open her shop or speak to anyone. On the third night, just as they'd agreed, the geese came tapping at her window. This time, Agatha was expecting them. She had left the window open, and she smiled to herself as they popped in, one by one. We're back, Agatha, said Sydney. We had a great time with that credit card. They kept wanting to give us the bill, but we just said, no thanks, the last thing we need is another bill. And then, but he never finished his sentence. As he looked across the room, he saw, hanging on her wall, were six white fleecy coats. Agatha had spun and woven and sewn each one. The geese were extremely grateful and thanked her kindly. Each goose slipped into his new coat and took a gander in the mirror. As they were about to leave, Sydney turned to Agatha and said, You know, Agatha, these are really magnificent coats. 
Whatever did you make them from? Agatha sat up in the bed, and these geese saw that their coats were made from... Agatha's hair. And Agatha smiled and said, Everything comes from something. I have your feathers, you have my hair. What's good for the goose is good for the gander, eh, Sydney? Oh, Agatha, said one of the geese, you keep us in stitches. By the way, Agatha, said Sydney, chuckling, your hair looks just ducky, and lucky for you and me, your hair grows back just like feathers. Agatha says she's never heard another honk from her fine feathered friends. However, someone's been leaving fresh goose eggs on her doorstep every morning. Where do goose eggs come from, anyway? <laughs>